All right, so what are you making? We're making zucchini salsa today. It's actually my sister Sherry's recipe. Uh, it has lots of good stuff in it. It's got peppers from the garden, and we have onions from the garden in here, all the tomatoes from our garden and my dad's garden, and zucchini from my dad's garden, zucchini from ours, and actually a really cool star squash, I think it's called. I think I have that wrong, but anyways, from my sister's garden. So my sister has this recipe, zucchini salsa, which she looked up and added a few different things to, just to kind of get rid of her zucchinis, because we have so many zucchinis. And this is the second time we've made it. The first time it turned out really, really good, so we're doing it again, and we've done a double batch this time. So hopefully this one tastes just as good as the last. Um, I, if you want more information on this salsa, go to my sister's YouTube channel, Gardening in the North. She has a video on how to make this salsa with all the ingredients at the bottom in the comments. Uh, so yeah, it's really delicious and this is before we have blended it. It's so a good way you... to get your kids to eat stuff too because our kids just gobble this up but they probably would like, you know, pucker their nose up at some of the individual components. But they'll Our kids they'll really eat this. like it. So, well, our youngest, not so much. He's a little picky, <laughs> but our middle son just absolutely loves it with nacho chips. So it's really, really good. So now that we have cooked it in this nice big roaster that I have, um, we're gonna blend it up, but we're gonna blend it up so there's like big chunks in the salsa because we really like that. Uh, before we put it in here, I forgot to mention that we did bake all of the veggies in the oven. So the tomatoes, the onions, the peppers, we baked in the oven for about 40 minutes at about 350 and then put it, them all in the roaster with the zucchini that we had dried out from the night before. I sliced it all up and shaved it all up the night before and then mixed it all in here with the zucchini and the squash that we put in here, uh, which was actually a white scallop squash. And then we added in some lemon juice, vinegar, um, dry mustard, paprika, cumin, and some garlic powder and basically just mixed it all together, cooked it in here for about an hour and now we're ready to blend it. Going through it like this just to kind of, you know, get big chunks and not really do like a puree because we like the salsa to have big chunks of veggies in it. So how much do you like this blender? Blender is awesome actually. Like it's amazing. It's actually even better for soups. It's really great. If you don't have a hand blender, get one. <laughs> so it looks pretty good. Okay, so for the jars, um, you gotta boil them in water for like roughly like 20 minutes or so. Just to make sure everything's dead on them. And then we have this cool canning jar pickup thing. And then once they're out of the boiling water, you have to fill them as quick as possible. So we have this, nice little funnel. Get a funnel. Last time we did not have the funnel, and <laughs> it was difficult. And then we've got this handy magnetic picker-upper so that we don't have to touch the lids at all. You want it pretty full so that there's hardly any air gap. And then in the boiling water are the rings. And that's it. You just hand tighten them and then you let them cool overnight. Okay, so then we recover them and reboil them for about five minutes. So when you're done, um, never tilt the cans because you can actually interfere with the seal. You can break the seal. So just I give it a small little tilt just to get the water off the lid, um, but careful tilting it full. And then this is it. 
So we got 11 cans, all 100% fresh garden ingredients. Very, very healthy, nutritious, and the taste just kicks the crap out of anything in the store. Now, as they cool down, they'll actually suck the lid down, and that's what's going to make the seal. So you don't want to touch any part of this um, until that seal is very, very solid. And then you want to be really careful around touching the lid. Okay, so this here is a jar from the previous batch. Um, and how we actually store it is we take the rings off because you don't want to have the ring on it. You don't want to hand tighten it after it pops. Um, down because you don't want the ring to be the thing that's holding the lid down You want the actual vacuum seal to hold the lid down because there could be an air gap in there and the ring is holding it down making it look like um, Maybe the uh, the seal is good and it's masking a failed seal So you want to take the rings off and you want to store them like this no ring and you don't want to ever stack them on top And it's really important that you do this properly because you could potentially get botulism See, so you can see here, this is jam from a previous batch, and this is how we're storing it. No rings at all. And you can see that the uh, lids are still intact and the seal is still good. This way you know that your product still has a good seal. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And um, we blatantly ripped this recipe off from my sister-in-law over at Gardening in the North. I'm going to put a description or a link straight to her video on the salsa in the description of this video so check out below go watch her stuff she's got a lot of really good cooking recipes because what's the point of growing all this food if you don't cook with it so go over check her out and i will see you on the next one thanks for watching so